Okay, so no pressure or anything, but The Walking Dead just won Game of the Year at the Spike Video Game Awards, and seeing as how I finished the game myself a couple weeks ago, I thought I would go ahead and throw yet another opinion out into the ether, because if there is one thing the internet loves, it's opinions. I've made a horrible mistake. Suffice it to say, The Walking Dead does not need to prove itself as a viable franchise. The fact that it now exists in comic, television, and a video game form are proof enough that the zombie fad still has some bite left in it. Telltale's episodic adventure game may not have the same budget or high-profile actors as its TV counterpart, but what it lacks in hype, it makes up for with heart. Adapted from Robert Kirkman's comic series, the game is set in the same universe but features largely new characters with their own unique story. Oversight from Kirkman has allowed Telltale to craft a compelling story that fits within the tone and theme of the original comic, down to its graphic novel-esque art style. The game takes more than just visual cues from its predecessor, though. Like the comic, it too focuses on the interpersonal aspects of a zombie outbreak rather than the outbreak itself. That's not to say you won't bludgeon the occasional walker or bash someone's head in here or there. There's certainly room for violence, and the game takes liberty with that on more than one occasion. But at the end of the day, The Walking Dead is an emotional journey, one about survival, despair, and testing the limits of the human condition. It goes to show, people will up and go mad when they believe their life is over. Players will assume the role of Lee Everett, a former law professor turned suspected felon who's been accused of murdering his wife's lover. His backstory is kept purposefully vague throughout the story, so players can mold their own identity choosing either to be forthcoming about his past or withholding. Indiscretions aside, it's clear that Lee is a good man at heart and it's easy to identify with his character. After some unlikely events, Lee manages to escape incarceration and finds himself in the midst of a full-on zombie outbreak. Stumbling into a nearby yard, he meets Clementine, an adorably precocious young orphan who winds up under his care. Excellent voice acting and realistic dialogue make for some incredibly tender moments between the two, and Lee's bond with Clementine only deepens as the game progresses. From two, you eventually form a group, and the more survivors you take in, the more problems you're inevitably confronted with. Difficult decisions, like who gets food rations that day, or whether or not you should kill someone if they've been bitten, are just a taste of the moral choices you'll have to make in this game, and none come without their own set of consequences. Around the second episode, Lee begins to take on more of a leadership role in the group, and it becomes important to build trusting relationships with the people around you. A large portion of the game will be simply talking to the others, and a wide range of conversation options will allow you to engage them from a few different angles. Players can opt to receive notifications in the upper left-hand corner that lets you know when something you've done has made an impression on someone, implying that it's somehow pertinent to the outcome of the story. Now obviously Telltale wants to impart the illusion of choice with a feedback mechanism like that, but it clearly rewards honesty above all else, sometimes going so far as to undermine you when you choose what is clearly not their right answer. <sighs> Conversations are balanced out by some rather gripping action scenes, and dramatic music is used well in combination with quick time events to really ramp up tension. Gameplay is, for the most part, a well-balanced blend of exploration and simple puzzles, but not everything hits the mark. On a couple of occasions, the game will try to convince itself that it's a shooter, and while those moments are few and far between, they do make you question why they were put in to begin with. Almost as though Telltale knew they weren't worth fully refining, but decided to include them anyway. My biggest gripe with The Walking Dead, though, has to do with the lag, which was pretty much constant on the XBLA version and always seemed to be worse during tense sequences, sometimes immediately before you're required to make a split-second decision. Making tough choices is hard enough under pressure, but being taken out of the experience by lag is arguably worse, especially when that lag prevents you from doing the very thing you're supposed to do. Every episode concludes with a breakdown of the key decisions you made in that episode and then compares it to the decisions of other players, something like a spectrum of moral relativity. But what bearing those decisions have of the game never really becomes clear, and despite the appearance of choice, the narrative is still surprisingly one-directional. The decisions you make might have meaningful consequences in the short term, but the truth is that they really don't matter in the end. Nothing does. What happens, happens, and you'll be powerless to stop it. Curiosity might be enough to warrant multiple playthroughs for you, and the game certainly offers and encourages that feature, but to me it felt almost futile after finishing the story. Like the game is too good at what it does, draining you of every last ounce of emotion until you're face down in a pile of tissues just begging for the tears to stop. 
It's an understatement to say that The Walking Dead is a heavy experience, but ultimately, it's an experience worth having. It's heart-wrenching in every sense of the word, and despite my frustrations, I still strongly respect it for not only advancing the medium in terms of emotional storytelling, but for doing so in a way that does not pander to its own audience. Whether or not you enjoy it will largely depend on what you expect to get out of it. If you're looking for a game that can be played hundreds of different ways with thousands of possible outcomes, this is not the game for you. On the other hand, if you're looking for a well-written and well-acted piece of interactive fiction that's as memorable as it is unapologetically depressing, then The Walking Dead is pretty much as good as it gets. I say try the first episode and take things from there. So those are my thoughts on The Walking Dead. Uh, with regards to platforms, it's out on pretty much all of them. You can get this on Xbox, PS3, PC, Mac, and iOS. I highly recommend checking out the PC version if you can. In my experience, it was the one that had the least bit of lag. And also, of course, there are retail copies out now. You can buy physical discs in store. Those are $5 more than the downloadable versions. So make sure you actually want to play the game before you buy those. Uh, a couple other notes of point. Um, try waiting a couple days, if you can, between episodes just so you can really feel the weight and gravity of your decisions. And also make sure you stick around after the credits because that is super important, trust me. As always, thank you for watching and uh, if you have any agreements or disagreements, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will read them later and try not to cry.